mystic or something. was pretty much in the middle of the week. Both endpoints will be considered Remembrance Day. We will begin the service with God Save the Queen, Please Rise.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the service of Holy Communion on this 25th Sunday after Pentecost. Welcome to this service also as we continue uh, remembrance. I uh, remember you we know that the Remembrance Day fell on a Thursday, and so also this Sunday we continue the remembrance of those who saved our country. And so we pray to God that He continue to give us peace. We begin our service on page 185 in the Book of Alternative Services. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you are Christ's open, all the sides known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts from the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and with me magnify you in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you are the Lord and the Holy One. You are the Lord. Spectacle yourself. 
Put away your mind. But Hannah answered, No, my Lord, I am a woman deeply troubled. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have been pouring out my soul before the Lord. Do not regard your servant as a worthless woman, for I have been speaking of my great anxiety and vexation all this time. And Eli answered, Go in peace. The God of Israel grant the petition you have made to him. And she said, Let your servant find favor in your sight. Then the woman went to her quarters, ate and drank with her husband, and her countenance was sad no longer. <laughs> they rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord. Then they went back to their house at Ramah. Now Canaan knew his wife Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. In due time, Hannah conceived and bore a son. She named him Samuel, for she said, I have asked him a Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. 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 The song appointed for this Sunday is taken from Samuel. You say it alternatively, and I will begin. My heart results in the Lord, my strength is exalted in my God. My heart will rise my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. There is no holy one like you, O Lord. Nor any rock like you, our God. For we are our God, The bowels of the mighty are broken, but the feeble gird on strength. Those who are fallen on sick bread, but those who are hungry are all ahead. The barren woman has borne sevenfold, but she who has many children is forlorn. With our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience, 
and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us continue, so let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. The word of the Lord.
teacher, what large stones and what large buildings did Jesus ask him? Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, and John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will this be, and what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of the wars and the rivers of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place. But the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in the various places, and there will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. And Jesus said, when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be efforts in various places, there will be famines. This is but the beginning of birth ends. Lord, from a long time ago, you have told us that wars will come our way. You have told us that famines will come our way. You have told us that pandemics will also come. But it is not the end. But rather these are just bad things. Make us to hope in you. To know that we are not at the very end. To know that we are not lost. But you are our hope, Lord Jesus Christ. Continue to teach us to hope in you and to be patient. All this we ask through your name. Amen. Amen. So friends, we meet this morning as we read from Mark chapter 13. And Jesus is being asked by his disciples on when the end will come. The uh, story begins when Jesus has just come from down the Kimberon Valley and as he went up, they are looking at Jerusalem. So there is an, uh, a mountain where these people were and they are looking down at Jerusalem and they are looking at the beauty of Jerusalem and one of the disciples is admiring uh, Jerusalem. And so he looks at Christ and he says, Hey, Lord, teacher, Look at these great buildings. Look the large stones and the large buildings. What do you think about that? This disciple thought that Jesus was going to say how magnificent this is. But it is Jesus' response that is so bland. He says, do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. And the disciples looked at him, stunned, and they're like, but we thought that you were going to pass a comment on our buildings. But now why are you talking about destruction? And Christ continued with this story, and he said to them, you know what? Beware that no one leads you astray. Men will come in my name, and they will say, I am he, and they will lead you astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, the end has not yet come. I can imagine people who were there during the First World War. I can imagine people who were there during the Second World War. What were their preachers saying to them? Those who are apocalyptic, those who are prophets of doom, could have told the people, this is the end. This is the end of the world. 
The Lord is destroying everything. And that's why we have these wars. Remember the story of the war of the Armageddon? And many people talk about that. Whenever they see a war that's so intense, they will say, this is the Armageddon. We are going to be destroyed and this is the end of the world. So I can imagine people in those wars, what they were thinking as they were hearing every time that there are wars around them. I regret that I didn't have much time to put up uh, pictures there. But I can imagine in 1940, 1941, when Britain was attacked, London was attacked by Germany, Hitler commanding the Nazi forces, and uh, uh, Winston Churchill commanding the, the British army as well. I can imagine what these guys were thinking. I can imagine what the Britons were thinking when this so-called blitz war came over them because the German soldiers were known uh, through their war which was known as the Blitzkrieg which was a very uh, fast war they would just come home in no time they would attack like lightning so when the blitz happened in 1940, 1941 I don't know what the Britons thought Maybe they thought this is the end of the world. Remember, in that war of eight months, up to 40,000 people were killed in that war. I can imagine what the Britons were thinking. Maybe they thought this is the end of it. But if at that time there was a prophet of God, if at that time there was a man who hears from God, and would have just said, you know what, the British and your allies, you are going to conquer the Germans. You are going to attack them, and destroy them, and uh, you will never hear of the Nazi again. You will never hear of Adolf Hitler again. I don't know what people would say to that prophet. But this is exactly what happened. The phoenix rose from the ashes. Hitler was destroyed. 1945, the war was ended. Hitler was destroyed. The Nazi was, was destroyed. Now, when we read Mark chapter 13, someone was asking, Where are you taking us to this story? When we read Mark chapter 13, this is a story written in the Gospel according to Mark. But it is being put in the gospel according to Mark because Mark has an intention when he is putting this story. What is the intention of Mark? Mark is writing his gospel after, after the destruction of Jerusalem. That's what Mark is doing. He is writing after the destruction and many writers will tell you that the destruction of Jerusalem happened in AD 70. And so Mark is this writing they are saying, well, this, 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 he is writing just after the event, post-event, that's when Mark is writing. But why is he putting this story of the destruction of Jerusalem? He is putting the story because he wants to give hope to the Christians. Because the Christians were people who were persecuted in that time. This is the story. There was an emperor known as Nero. Nero was in charge of the Roman uh, of Rome. And so he was the commander in chief of the Roman army. Nero came and he said to the Israelites, I want to take this land where your temple is. Please sell this land to me. But the Israelites would not give it to him. And then Nero thought, what should I do in order for me to get this place? So Nero went out and then he did light up dogs. So he did put petrol on the dogs and then he did light up the dogs. The 
The dogs went into the city of Jerusalem and they burned the city of Jerusalem. Why was he doing that? So that when the city is burned, the Israelites would sell him the land for a song. And when that happened, the people asked and they said, Who has burned our city? Because they knew that Nero had asked for this land. They said, Nero has burnt our city. But then Nero went ahead and he said, let us say the Christians are the ones who have burnt this city. For Christians were under persecution at that time. And so Nero spread the rumors that the Christians are the ones who have burnt the city of Jerusalem. And many people turned against the Christians. So the Christians again were persecuted, some of them being killed. So what would happen, they would take, uh, uh, you, you know, the hides of sheep, and then they would clothe the Christians. Then they would bring lions in an arena. And then these Christians had to fight with the lions. And all people would be watching and they would be laughing. Some Christians were set on fire while everyone was looking. Some of them were killed. So this is where we get our mantras, this is where we get our sayings at the persecution of Nero. But Mark is putting this story so that he gives hope to all Christians. He is saying to them, the Lord told you about this even before this thing happened. Because Christ once said it. He said that no stone will be left upon another. But that's not the end. That's where the story is. The story is not on walls. The story is not on famines or earthquakes. But the story is, this is not the end. So I would imagine that in the Second World War, people needed to be told this good news. That this is not the end of the world. But God is still with us. He has not lost us. And I also need to tell you this word. In this time again, when you are thinking that you are at the very end, Mark is telling us, stand firm. This is not the end. For Christ said, even if wars come, even if famines came, even if earthquakes came, even if coronavirus comes, it is not the end. But these are just bad things. It is not the end. So we are not lost. But the Lord continues to be with us. Stand firm. Be hopeful. Know that the Lord is always with us. He walks with us. Back to the story of the Second World War. I wish the people in that time were told that this is not the end. But the things will rise from the ashes and things will be well. Out of Hitler will withdraw, they will overthrow, and it will be the end of him, and it will be the end of the Nazi. The people will have freedom, the people will have a better world, a better world that we talk of today. So I look at you and I tell you, friends, there are some things that are very simple and very small that irritates you but it is not the end of the world mm -hmm. i laugh sometimes when someone complains about the speed of the internet and i look at you and i say really? is that the end of the world mm -hmm. i laugh when i look at some of the people i interact with they complain the snow has not yet been clear how do they want us to walk how do they want us to drive? What are they doing? It's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. There are some of the things that are very simple that we think that this is the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. Imagine the people in the Second World War. Imagine the people in the First World War. What they had to go through in order for us to enjoy whatever we are enjoying right now. It's not the end. So in all things, whenever you go through difficult times, just like this time which we are going through, the time of the pandemic, it is not the end of the world. The things will rise from the ashes. Things will be well. 
again. We may not come back to that to those old days, but all the same, we will still be here and life will still go on. Christ said, It is not the end of the world, it is the beginning of the times. So take heart, be hopeful, hope in the Lord. Things will be well. Don't let the little things of life disturb you. Famines, earthquakes, wars are little things. They are beginnings of bad things. Take heart. May we remain hopeful in the Lord. May we remain clinging to the Lord and saying we know that patience, persistence, endurance, they pay at the very end. And so Paul says the same words. We know that endurance produces courage. And courage produces hope. And hope does not disappoint. Why am I saying these words? We are almost at the very end of the season of Trinity. And we are going to enter into the season of Advent. The season of Advent is a season of waiting. It is a season of being hopeful. It is a season of hope where we look for the second coming of Christ. And he's saying to us, stand firm, I will come. It's not the end of the world. Amen. Courage to proclaim the gospel. Courage to persevere in time. 
times of trouble. Give us the mind to know what is good and true. Give us a will to be faithful to you. Give us a heart to love and serve you. We pray for Christians working in dangerous places, for all who are facing persecution for their faith. God is our strength and salvation. In him we will not be afraid. God of love, may we learn to live in harmony and peace. We pray for all places where there is violence, oppression, or tyranny, for all places of violence, <coughs> crime, and neglect. Strengthen all who work for freedom and peace. God is our strength. In him we will not be afraid. We pray for the place where we work, and we remember that we are both we remember all that are overworked or discriminated against. We pray for any without a proper wage or a dependable income. And this morning let us pray for our homeless here in God. We give thanks for our homes and our loved ones. God is our strength. In him we will not be afraid. God of all, give hope and strength to all caught up in disasters, all who are suffering from famine or flood, all caught up in storms or earthquakes. Give courage to all who have fallen, all whose sickness finds no cure, all who are afraid for their future. When we pray this morning for our sick and those who have asked us to, Carolyn Riach, Carolyn Wilson, Kevin Bedden, Amy Shute, Janice Lester, Bill and Louise Lomas, Eric Bondry, Bob Reed, Brian Reed, Sharon Robinson, Teresa Schenken, Barb Kostovich, and Rick Victor. And we pray for our seniors in Patricia Gardens and those in Francisco. God is our strength and our salvation. In him we will not be afraid. We give thanks for those who are now where sorrow and pain are no more. We rejoice in the fellowship of your saints and commend our loved ones departed to your almighty love. God is our strength and our salvation. In him we will not be afraid. God of all power and might, give us grace to trust you in the darkness as well as in the light. In the face of danger and adversity, be our strength and hope, that we may live and work in your praise and glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. Almighty God, we beseech thee that we here do honor to the memory of those who have died in the service of their country and of the crowd. May be so inspired by the spirit of their love and their fortitude that forgetting all selfish and, and unworthy motives, we may give one day to your glory and to the service of mankind through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not done to you, Lord. Pardon and deliver us from all our 
peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us hope on another sign of Let us pray. Holy God, in this year grace we renew our baptismal covenant. Help us through our offering this day to renounce all things that draw us from your love. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We will use Eucharistic prayer one on page 193. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right that we should praise you, gracious God, for you created all things. You formed us in your own image. Men and female, you created us. When we turned away from you in sin, you did not cease to care for us, but opened the path of salvation for all people. You made a covenant with Israel, and through your servants Abraham and Sarah, Give the promise of a blessing to all nations. Through Moses, you led your people from bondage into freedom. Through the prophets, you renewed your promise of salvation. Therefore, with them and with all your saints, we have saved you in every age. We give thanks and praise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God, God.
Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Gracious God, this perfect sacrifice destroys the power of sin and death by raising him to life to give us life forevermore. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is alive, Christ, Christ is risen, Christ is coming again. Recalling his death, proclaiming his resurrection, and looking for his coming again in glory, we offer you, Father, this prayer and this cup. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts that all who eat and drink at this table may be one body and one holy people, a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord, through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who are in heaven, I pray be thy Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We'll start at the back, coming forward, please. Thank you. 
Gracious God, in this sacrament we have shared the body and blood of Christ. May we who have been nourished by holy things bear witness to his life and share in his eternal priesthood, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power we can in us, can do it in the name of the
if uh, a couple of other able-bodied types would like to hike over, we can use a piano on it. rise for O Canada. Please tighten your abdominal muscles because this will be in the original key, which is hard. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, she's dead. Yeah, no kidding. It isn't that, it's that this. Oh, yeah. Oh,